Hello everyone, this is Robert. In this video, I'm gonna share with you some of the progress I've made on my LX Mini speaker build. In the previous video, I was talking about just kind of the proof of concept and had everything kind of, you know, figured out from a prototype standpoint. And in this video, I think I have most of the design pretty much finalized. There's a couple little tweaks that I'm gonna be doing, but I think I have it kind of figured out how I'm actually gonna make the thing, build the thing, what materials I'm gonna be using. So that's what this video is going to be. And then in future videos, we'll talk about the controller and then hopefully this whole thing will be done. So um, let's take a quick look at the design first, and then we'll move over into the kind of fabrication side of things. For demonstration purposes, I've decided to take the speaker and kind of shrink it down quite a bit. I took one of the off cuts of the PVC and mount it in the middle. This piece is normally supposed to be about 30 inches or 750 millimeters, but I've shrunk it down just so that I can kind of show the whole speaker at once and because it is kind of adorable like this. So in doing the design for this speaker, I knew that the top section was gonna be 3D printed, the bottom section was gonna be 3D printed, I was gonna have some pipe in the middle, and I was gonna make something to kind of hold this top section where it needs to be. And my wife brought up a really good point when I was kind of running over a lot of different designs, everything kind of just looked like a pipe coupler. You know, whether it be an end cap or whether it be one of those reducers, it just kind of always looks like that. As long as you have a lip around this outside, you're always gonna run into that as a visual appearance. Now the original design was meant for a rubber pipe coupler that would kind of have these hose clamps that would go on here and step up and then hold the driver on top. And that's what the original design was meant for. But I wanted to kind of try and get away from that as much as possible. So in thinking about that, what I came up with is actually taking and adding a lip to the PVC pipe on top and bottom, and that would allow me to mount it perfectly flush and smooth so there'd be a nice transition and it wouldn't end up just looking like a cap. So let's go in SolidWorks and I'll kind of give you an idea of the um, overall design that I'm looking at for the speaker. So here is the current design in SolidWorks. You can see everything laid out here, and here is the new version. So much sleeker, much cleaner, in my opinion. And we've actually shortened this middle pipe. It's a lot longer here. We've kind of shortened it to accommodate for much longer um, sections up top and on bottom. And then we have these three legs that kind of come off the side. And I'll actually show this whole section. I have this all printed out. And then on the top, we just kind of have this little arm that connects the two. The whole top section pretty much remains the same, but we just have a Eh, much more cleaned up top section. I didn't obviously model the whole drivers. These are just kind of representations. But if we look at the cross section here, you can kind of see what's going on. So this is an interesting little feature. This middle arm actually has a wire channel going down the whole thing so that the wiring for the top driver can actually come down inside and there should actually be a hole right there. I need to add that. That wiring comes down and then there's a um, new trick four pole connector over here that comes out the back and then you can see how the feet attach. There's two internal screws and then there's another two from the bottom side. So yeah, that's kind of what the design looks like. And then you can see the junction between the PVC pipe and the 3D printed parts right there. So yeah, that's what the design looks like. Um, let's go look at the 3D printed prototypes for this. So here is a 3D printed prototype of the base. These legs are gonna be aluminum, um, but this is the actual 3D printed base section. Now, I went back and forth a lot about what material to use. This is actually ABS and, you know, it's fine. I don't really like the surface finish of it as is, so I was planning on doing acetone vapor smoothing. I did some tests and I just really didn't like the way that looked, so I'm gonna switch all this over to Nylon X. So it's gonna be relatively expensive to do it in that material, but the surface finish of Nylon X is just really nice and I don't really have to do any post-processing. I kinda like the um, textured look and it hides all the layer lines and imperfections. So I'm gonna go with Nylon X for that. And I do have the material in for the legs. Let me go grab that. 
So I got a couple more pieces of this. This will be cut down and machined into the leg sections. And yeah, so that's kind of what it looks like. And it has a nice lip on the inside, which accommodates the pipe. I'll show you that here in a second. And I'm particularly proud of this little detail here. This is the rear connector. This is the Nutric 4-pole Speak-On connector. So this will go back to the controller. And just because of the way 3D printing works and overhangs and everything, I couldn't recess this directly into this as a single piece. So this is actually a cover that sits over top. So here is one of those pieces. So this is just a little um, cosmetic plate that sits over the top to hide everything because you'd have some kind of nasty looking geometry if you printed it vertically like it is right now. And then on the bottom, um, I don't have all the fasteners in, but you can see the fastener attachments for the legs. And then there's some on the internal that you can get to by reaching your hand inside. And as for the feet, uh, I found these on Amazon. These just kind of thread into the bottom and they pop off and there's actually a little ball bearing inside. So that sits inside this foot. And then there's a little um, detent on the bottom of there. And then so when it presses down in there, this actually kind of pivots and you're just resting on that ball bearing. And yeah, I think they look kind of nice and that'll be a good solid footing for these speakers. So let's talk about making the PVC pipes. There are a lot of different ways to cut PVC pipe down to size. I opted for the bandsaw. In the original plans, they said you could use a table saw or even a hacksaw, but table saw is kind of sketchy and you kind of have to rotate it when the blade's moving. So I opted for the bandsaw and this was really, really easy and I actually got a nice little edge. After I cut these down to size, I just need to bring it over and kind of deburr the ends. There's, you really can't get a perfectly clean cut on PVC. So yeah, I just need to kind of clean up the ends, sand it down a little bit, and it is ready to go for the next operation. For cutting the step or the lip in the ends of the PVC pipe, I'm actually using my router table and this rabbiting bit that I found. Initially, I was just going to go with a straight cut bit or a, a flush trim bit and then just do a smaller bearing up top, but that was kind of proving difficult. But then I found this rabbiting kit, which has different size bearings up top, and they're basically just bearings with a little bushing on the outside. And you can select which one you want to use. So all I did is I selected the one that is an eighth inch smaller, and then it just gives me that little bit of a lip. So it's pretty simple. And I was actually surprised at how well this cut. Um, PVC cuts relatively well. The surface is a little bit rough, but that doesn't really matter. If anything, it'll just accept glue better. Um, but it did throw chips or shavings or snow like everywhere. And this was a real pain to clean up. And as I'm recording this voiceover, I'm looking at the mess that still exists from this, even with the dust collection. But yeah, it was a pretty easy cut. Did that on both ends of the pipe, no problem. And here is the first test fit and everything works exactly what I was hoping. It's a pretty tight fit to get it in there, but everything lines up and there's a nice smooth transition between the two pieces. And I'll show a closer up version of this next. So here's a better look at the interface between these two. There we go. So it is a really nice, smooth, seamless transition. Once this is painted, it's not gonna be painted the exact same color, but I think the um, contrast right now is making it look a little bit weird. But once this gets painted black, it'll look a lot nicer. So that is a good segue into the next section, which is getting this pipe prepped for painting. Thankfully, PVC sands pretty well. I just used some sanding blocks, a like a coarse grit, and then a medium grit. Just kind of scuffed up the surface a little bit with one, and then just kind of smoothed it out with the other. And it takes a lot of elbow grease, but there's only two of these, so it didn't take that long. And um, yeah, just kind of smoothed it out, and it's time to paint. 
For painting, I'm using Benjamin Moore Advanced Paint. This is um, primarily used for interior, like trim, doors, cabinets, things like that. The reason I'm using is because I recently used some on a project inside in my family room, painting some cabinetry, and it levels out really nice. It goes on with a foam roller. I wanted to kind of avoid using spray paint for this, so I'm going to give it a shot and we're going to see how this works out. Yeah, so I'm a bad YouTuber. I already did the first coat off camera because sometimes I like doing things off camera. But they're just sitting here. I have some aluminum extrusions clamped to the edge of my workbench so I can kind of, um, you know, slide them on and off easily. And you might be noticing wires coming out of the inside. Well, that's because I went and overkilled it. There's like a hot dog roller set up. You've got a motor with a wheel on it and then the bearing block back here. So. In theory, I can put these on, turn on the motor, and make them spin. It didn't end up being very useful. I didn't end up using it, and it would just kind of either walk off one end or walk off the other, and I didn't want to sit there and troubleshoot it. So, um, yeah, the first coat went on okay. I'm going to do a little bit of sanding just to kind of knock down a little bit of the texture, and that is totally fine. I'll just do a little bit of 600 grit wet sanding, and then I'll do a second coat. I'm using just a simple foam roller, just kind of going on like that. I'll do a second coat and I'll try and film that one. This is Benjamin Moore Advanced, like I said. The cool thing about this paint is it has a 16 hour cure time. So it actually takes a really long time to cure, which means that it self levels. So this stuff really theoretically will level out really nicely. Um, the first coat is just kind of critical. So I'm gonna knock that down a little bit. And yeah, the other thing about this paint is the color is onyx. And if anyone's familiar with 3D printing filament, Mark Forged version of Nylon X, or I guess the other way around, um, Nylon X is based on onyx from Mark Forged. So when I was picking colors, I was like, eh, I gotta go, go with onyx. So hopefully this will get a little bit more black. Um, I chose this color specifically to match the Nylon X, so we'll see how close I can get. But let's um, sand this down, put on a second coat, and go from there. Here's what the process of painting the tubes look like. It's pretty much exactly like I said. I'm just using this foam roller, going over it, spinning it a little bit, going over it again. I'm not putting on too much paint at any time. I don't want, you know, lines developing. I let this dry for a few hours, um, sometimes overnight, just kind of depends on what I'm doing. And then I will bring this into, um, we have a utility sink in our laundry room and I'll take this and I'll wet sand it and I actually went up to about a thousand or twelve hundred grit wet sand with this and if you're unfamiliar with wet sanding I'm not going to show it because I don't really have a good place for the camera in that room but I basically just run it underwater and just very very lightly rub my hand I'm just using the weight of my hand with the sandpaper just to kind of knock down the high spots and remove as much of the texture as possible not trying to remove any paint, not trying to go aggressive, just kind of smoothing out a little bit of the texture. Do that, go back, throw on another coat, and I think I'm gonna end up doing about four coats with this. Okay, so I think I'm gonna leave the video for right here. Gotta save content for all the future videos. So what is next? The next step is to machine, cut these down and machine the feet or the legs, calling them the legs. So that'll probably be its own video, but I need to make six of these. I also need to finish printing all of the other pieces. Each one of those is gonna take about day and a half to two days, you know, for the big top and bottom pieces. I have three spools of nylon X coming, so I'll get that done. So the next speaker video, other than the legs, will be the final assembly, because I think I'll have all the parts ready for that. And then we can move on to the controller. Then once the controller is built, then we can kind of do in-room correction, DSP stuff, and kind of get them fully and finally set up and maybe do some listening impressions. So that's what's going on. I'll be on the lookout for the next leg video and the final assembly video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.